So, welcome back. Today we are continuing with Web Fundamentals Pathway from Try Hack Me. Today we will be doing Authenticate Room. Authenticate Room is about doing penetration testing for uh, applications or for, for authentication mechanisms in web applications. You will be learning how to test uh, a website for authentication vulnerabilities in order to be able to log in. So basically, this is the room of uh, this video today. If you want to check out the other walkthroughs, kindly go to the playlist, Try Hack Me Up and the Montes on my channel, and check the walk the walkthroughs of other rooms in the uh, Web Fundamentals pathway. All right, so clicking on Authenticate, we have uh, three ways to test for, or four ways to test for web application or test for authentication mechanisms, dictionary attack, re-registration, JSON Web Token and No Auth. So we will be taking the uh, tasks one by one, answering the questions, and explaining how we got the answers. So deploy the machine and get started. So the first task is dictionary attack. All right. So so we opened the web page on port eighty-eight eighty-eight. Okay, and we have a login form here. So in order to test this login form and find out the username and password for the admin user, let's say, or any other required user, in our case, we, ha we have to, to find out the uh, password for the username Mike. So the suggested way and the recommended way is use burp suit. Basically, you can use curl, you can use Hydra, you can use Medusa, but the suggested way for this room is to use burp suit. So we turn the interceptor and we go back, try with the required username, or try with uh, Mike and some test password. Click on sign in. The request will be sent to, as you can see, Perp suit. And in the request, we have the username and password that we have supplied to the web application. We have Mike and we have test. We're interested in finding the password for Mike. So what we can do here, we can highlight the request, right click, sent to intruder okay now we go to intruder go to positions highlight the positions that we would like to test so basically we will clear mic since we're interested in testing the user mic so clear the payload and mic keep the payload highlighted or selected or set on the password now we select sniper since we are testing for one variable or one parameter or one a payload which is the password go to payloads now here we select the word list that we would like to use to find the password so first we set the number of payloads the number of payload is one the type is simple list keep it as simple list now here the options we click on load and we go to user share then we highlight or we select word list and on to rockq.txt and we select start the process let me close my email it's doing a lot of mess okay start okay so due to some issues with burp suit i decided to pause the video and uh, resume it back so after the after you follow the instructions you will find that the password for mike is one two three four five. So Mike. One two. One two three four five. Sign in. Oops. Let's let's try again. With lowercase Mike. One two three four five. As you can see, now we are logged in as Mike. So that's the first flag. Let me see. I think I can't um, copy the flag. Let me copy it from here. Uh, so, submit and we get the first flag next one we need to log in as jack with the password which is one two three four five six seven eight so back to 
log out. I said upset is not working correctly. Let me log out. It doesn't respond. Whatever. Log out. Jack. Okay. Lowercase Jack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come on, no. Good back. Sign in. Okay, the flag. So that concludes the first task, which is dictionary attack. So that's the first way to test for uh, test login forms. Next one, re-registration. So let's come back to the step and demonstrate it. So basically, if we get back now to the site, go to different one, at different word. Or let me uh, verify again. No, actually, we need to say the same website. So 888. Look out. So. The technique is called re-registration, where we register an existing user. Okay, so there is an existing user in the website called Darren. Let's try to register as this user, Darren, email, Darren at gmail.com, and password is test. Register. So as you can see, this user is already registered which means you cannot actually register that user, right? But the trick is, or the technique is called re-registration, where we will get access to that user by re-registering that user itself. So how do you do that? Let's get back. So basically, again, turn on the interceptor and, or let's, let's uh, put it off now, register. Okay, so here we have there, right? Let's put Darren at Gmail, and the password is Darren. So let's turn on the interceptor, get back, click on register. OK, so here we have the request. So what we will do here, we will modify the username Darren. Instead of Darren, we will put space Darren. OK, that's the trick, right? As to reveal as it seems. <laughs> Uh, but that's one of the weaknesses in new applications, all right, or authentication mechanisms, which you can test for if you have, if you're conducting uh, or application penetration testing, you can do that to uh, as a uh, as a technique for web application penetration testing or login forms. So we click on forward. So I guess. We have registered the uh, user. Let's log in now with Darren. Space, Darren. Darren, sign in. As you can see, we are logged in as Darren. Okay. What happened now? We have actually changed the uh, password of the already registered user with this trick. Okay. Now let's grab the flag. So here, put the flag. Now, the next task is you try the same with the other Arthur. Okay, let's see what Arthur got for us. So cancel here, log out. Log out. Okay, now with Arthur, let's click on register. Arthur, Arthur at gmail.com. Arthur as password register. See, you can't. But what you will do here, you will get back and do a little bit um, difference in your process. So here, space, Arthur. Arthur at Gmail, and the password is Arthur. Register that guy. And you have, you have registered the guy. 
So basically, login space Arthur Arthur sign in and you get the flag inspect. I can't um, copy the flag for some reason, so let's grab it from here. Okay, now. So, so far, we have tested login forms using two techniques, dictionary attacks and re-registration. The next two techniques for testing authentication forms is JSON Web Token and NoAuth. So, the, third, the fourth task is JSON Web Token, which is a way to implement authorization in their web applications. So, basically, you use JSON Web Token to determine the level of access a user has on your web server or website. So basically to demonstrate this, let's have this form as a testing arena. We have here user, user called user and we have a password. So to know what is JSON Web Token, let's turn on the intercept and click on authenticate. So basically, uh, okay, let me click on forward this time. It's not showing, go. Okay, so as you can see, authorization, we have a field called authorization and the value is GWT or JWT and there's a base 64 value. If I take this value here to understand more about it and go to base 64 decode and encode, decode. So as you can see, I have three parts. Part one, part two, and some other parts, it's not clear what it is. So basically, how do we know each part? The first section of the token, as you can see, starts and ends before the dot or the point. The first section equals to the header. This is the header of the GWT token. Next, after the first dot, we have the next part, which ends before the next dot, okay? So this next part is the uh, payload. The payload is the level of access the user has on the system. As you can see, the identity is equal to one. That's how we will play with the web server. So if we change the identity, we can trick the web server to think we are some one uh, or some user, which we are not, right? So we can change to two, to three, to four, to manipulate or to impersonate other users. What about the third part? The third part is the signature. Starts from here. The signature ensures the, the integrity and the encryption of the token. So technically, if you uh, change the identity now to two and supply this in the request here, it will not work. Why? Because the part here that ensures the integrity will detect your attempt to manipulate the identity and it will not work. So you have to get rid of the signature somehow. How do we do that? We go back to the uh, uh, the header. In the header, we have the algorithm used, which is HS2556. If we change this to none, okay, say none, and we cancel the signature, okay, change this to two, it will work. So the thing now is uh, we can try to sign in as user or user2, grab the JSON token, and then change the token to something that suits our purposes. So what we will do here, let's try to sign in as user, user, um, click on on, authenticate, forward, click on go, See now we have the JSON Web Token. We're gonna take this one, okay, and go to A64 decoder, decode. So we have now the authentication token. And as I explained earlier, the parts, what we will do, we need to get rid of the third part and we need to change the identity here to something or to a value that equals or corresponds to a username that we would like to access. And make sure here the algorithm equals to none. So you can do you can take them one by one, the encode, 
take the first part and then let's take the first part here change the token here let me get back I think we didn't change put here none encode this is the value change it okay back and take the next part which is the payload change the identity to 2 instead of 1 take that and this is the next value so copy that head back to perp suite and click on forward as you can see welcome admin which is the flag so take the flag copy that and provide the value okay that's about json web token now the last task is about no authentication so Let's demonstrate the scenario. So now we change the port to port sevens. All right, so create a new user. Let's say user one, password equal user one. So view private space. All right, so what is no uh, sorry, what is the last technique or what is the uh, last way to test uh, authentication mechanisms in our applications? It is called no authentication, which means that if we change the numeric here, which which equals to one, we can access other users' private spaces. All right, so if you change one to let's say two, you see we can now access another user private space. So why is that? Simply because there is no check on the user supplied input. So if I supply here one, two, three, four, five, the application does not check on the value. That's why whatever value I supply, the application responds positively by providing the requested page. So here, as you can see, by supplying two, we got access to the admin account, which is uh, whose password is root admin your secret data i'm the admin of the website let's see the questions now um, find the way to get into super admin id add okay what is the password for the super admin what is the flag you found in the super admin account now normally super admins have an id of zero so if we change it to zero You see, hello super admin, this is the password and this is the flag. Simply, or simple, or fair enough. Whatever you would like to call it, very easy. And that's it about this room. So, four ways to test authentication mechanisms in your application. No authentication, web tokens, pre-registration, and dictionary attack. Most commonly, people use dictionary attacks to find the credentials of the admin user or whatever or any user on the system most people don't try these the rest of the techniques of course there are many techniques to test authentication mechanisms but these are the most common four so i hope you like today's video and see you in the next video